The Democratic Party civil war is upon us. Impeachment and socialism tearing them apart from the inside. So can Nancy Pelosi hold it all together or will the president exploit this new weakness and skate to an easy re-election victory? It's been only two months since Pelosi and Democrats retook control of the House. And in that short time, the rank and file have split over these two divisive issues. First, the hysteria over impeachment. Texas Congressman Al Green once again filing articles of impeachment against the president because it's Tuesday. I do not believe that an unfit president should be allowed to stay in office. Hmm, that's fine. Now, last time he had the support of more than five dozen fellow Democrats, but House Speaker Pelosi now says impeachment is not in the cards. She took that option off the table. House Majority Leader Steny Hoyer says the issue is just a distraction, but the big shots in the party still risking mutiny from some of those freshman upstarts. Among them, Congresswoman Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez and Rashida Tlaib. And surprise, surprise, AOC is also one of the leaders of the faction giving Pelosi a headache over socialism. She's the main lawmaker pushing the so-called Green New Deal, as you know, a plan to completely remake and destroy the U.S. economy. But this past weekend, AOC showed just how little she understands about basic economics. Capitalism isn't, to me, is, it's an ideology of capital. It puts capital, the most important thing is the concentration of capital and it means that we seek and prioritize profit and the accumulation of money above all else, and we seek it at any human and environmental cost. That is what that means. And to me, that ideology is not sustainable and cannot be redeemed. That's what that means. Words. Yeah. All right, Pelosi has dismissed the Green New Deal, the Green Dream as a non-starter, but make no mistake, the party is drifting leftward whether she likes it or not. And if all that is about enough, Democrats also forced to defend their stance on anti-Semitism. The sensible Democrats can thank Ilhan Omar for that fiasco after she suggested Jewish lawmakers have a dual allegiance to Israel, among other statements she's made, an accusation lawmakers vehemently deny. So is the donkey party splitting apart at the seams like a Tijuana nightclub? And how might President Trump use that to retake or maintain, rather, the Oval Office. With me now, Strategic Communications Director for the President's 2020 campaign, Mark Lauder, is back. Uh, welcome back, Mark. Oh, thanks for having me, Kennedy. So, Rahm Emanuel, mayor of Chicago, right-hand man to Presidents Obama and Clinton, he says that the Trump, uh, or rather, the, the Democrats are going way too far left, and that is a gift to the President. Do you agree with that statement? Well, I don't think it's a gift. I think it's reality. Uh, and I think that the American people are going to have a choice uh, in 2020 between President Trump, the economic success we have seen under President Trump, the investment in our priorities, the, the defense of freedom and capitalism versus a party that has gone so far left that even Democrats now see that they are that the the Democrat Party's gone, that the, the party of your father, your grandfather, it's not there anymore. It's a party of socialism. No, I would uh, I would tend to agree with you there. I don't think it, it's just one party, and I don't think these competing ideologies can stay in the same place for very long because there is going to be a split, and it's going to depend on who the nominee is because right now the two front runners seem to be Joe Biden and Bernie Sanders, that, uh, that fresh young blood. And whoever emerges victorious in the Democrat nomination process, they're going to say a lot about the identity of the party. And I know Democrats really tried to heal the rift from 2016, and it just goes to show they haven't done a good job because, you know, hours after Nancy Pelosi makes that statement about impeachment is not on the table, it's too divisive, you have people like Al Green and AOC completely bucking that statement, saying, no, no, we're, we're still good with impeachment. No, absolutely. And then you have billionaire liberal donors that are out there angry that the Democrat Party is not following that path. But to show you exactly how far out of uh, out of sorts they've gotten, the AFL-CIO published a letter saying we will not tolerate the Green Deal because it's going to impact millions of their hardworking blue-collar Americans and their families. They're losing labor. 
Now, they've already lost the people, the, the, the workers, but the labor leaders are now follow, are following suit. I mean, it just shows you how far left they have gone. And I think many Democrats, many blue collar Americans who may have been middle of the road, maybe even slightly left of center, have to look at the economic results, more money in their paychecks, manufacturing jobs coming back against a party that says, we want to eliminate your health insurance. We want to pay money to people who don't even want to work. Yeah, we, Those want, are the we choices. want to eliminate uh, the, the choice you have in health insurance, and we want to eliminate entire sectors of the economy that happen to employ a lot of union labor, like the airline industry. Airline industry, automobile industry, my goodness, we actually have auto the jobs. The cow farting <laughs> industry, Mark? Don't okay, well, I'm not them. sure about that one, but I do love cows. Uh, they're delicious. But well, <laughs> union, union loyalists love beef. They always yeah, have. Absolutely. And, and they're not going to listen to Cory Booker and AOC on these matters. Uh, but let's talk a little bit about Al Green and the articles of impeachment. It's just different ways of going about the same thing, because uh, I think you have... Jerry Nadler and Adam Schiff, uh, who think that they're making a more nuanced argument for the same thing. And they might, may not use the term impeachment, but what they're really trying to do is harm the president so much that he is rendered unelectable. And what they're really trying to do is criminalize political differences. And, and that's just not the way our country works. And uh, they've tried over and over again with countless investigations, with the with the never-ending witch hunt, still not showing anything, no results for Pelosi it. Do you think Nancy Pelosi knows what the results of the uh, Mueller report are? And that's why she is trying to soften the blow by curtailing impeachment talk? I don't know if she knows the results of the investigation. What I probably think is that she knows the results of polling. Yeah. And because if you notice, as soon as they pivoted away from no impeachment, they started talking about other things that tried to carry the day in 2016. And so my guess is, and this is strictly a guess, it's not about the evidence because there isn't any. It's mm -hmm. about polling. And because most Americans don't believe in the impeachment process, they believe in our constitutional way of electing our president, our vice president, and no amount of one and mm -hmm. investigation is going to overturn that. Swing, swing states in the Rust Belt, uh, rather, are responsible for putting this president in the White House. And it seems like a far-left, super-socialistic message is not going to resonate with those voters. But some of the more moderate Democrats who won House races in purple districts, they tapped into economic messages that those voters responded to. When do you think the party is going to wake up and realize that, or do you hope they remain asleep? Uh, I don't actually think they can uh, uh, reverse this trend because you have such an angry base out there of supporters, whether they're donors, the people who go and knock on doors. And for all of those new incoming freshmen that won in those suburban districts, many of those districts that the president won in 2016, they're now going to find themselves in a very difficult position having to defend their colleagues in the Democratic side on socialism, green new deals, free Medicare for all, free every thing for mm -hmm. everyone with no way to pay for it, it's going to be a very difficult position for them because President Trump will also be on the ballot.